what it do, what it do. It's your boy Brock back with another episode of Broadcast. I'm your host, 2014 first round draft pick, 11 year NFL vet, Michael Brockers. My co host is my close friend, best friend, my brand manager for Brock Brand Clothing, Mr. Petty Pat. Talk to him. Yo, what's good? How y'all doing? What it do, what it what's do, good? man. What's good, everybody? What we got on the agenda today, man? Talk to me. Talk to um, me. Entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Uh, don't get me. Don't get me stressed out in here now. I, I don't, don't get me like... stressed out in here now. For real. Um, but yeah, so that'll be a, the topic today. So let's yeah. just talk about like what what made you want to get into entrepreneurship, man. You, you, you pushing me, bro. I, you know, at, at the beginning of it, bro, like I didn't want to do nothing because I felt like. I felt like I wasn't good enough. I felt like I wasn't known enough. Like, I felt like it, it, I had to be somebody before I made, you know, made myself known. So, and, oh, I didn't catch up. But that yeah. was a big thing. Like, I used to always tell you, look, bro, like, don't don't look at it that way. Like, right. Michael Brock, you've been in the league 11 years, right? Yeah. A lot of people can't say that. A mm-hmm. lot of people can't say that. So, right. regardless, if you feel like you're not one of those p- people who got five, six, seven, eight million followers on Instagram, mm-hmm. at the end of the day, you're still the NFL vet. And, like, For look, sure. bro, your name hold weight to a mm-hmm. lot of people out here. And as you can see, my, when you show up and you say, hey, man, I'm Michael Brockers, a lot of people like, oh, stop. I'd be shocked, bro. Yeah. I'd be shocked, like bro. Like the time we went golfing, <laughs> when we went golfing, right? And that guy yeah. was like, hey, bro, uh, are you Michael Brockers? Mm-hmm. Just randomly, bro. And I saw how shook you were. You were like, damn, somebody re- recognized me. Right. And for, and you know, that kind of made me, cause I'm like, look, see, I, this is what I've been trying to tell you all along. So mm-hmm. um, That story was crazy because it, it, more in depth, like that dude was a Rams fan in Detroit. Yes. And he was like, he was like, bro, my favorite player. He didn't know who I was at first. He was like, oh, bro, my favorite player in the Rams is Michael Brockers, man, because he took a picture with me and, you know, he, you know, he shouted me out or something I, something I did. You know, I clapped, you know, maybe hit his hand while we was on the yeah. sideline, something like that. He was like, yeah, that's one of my favorite players. And I was like, yeah, I'm Michael Brockers. He was like, what? No. You know, so from that reaction, I was like, dang, you, you never know, like, how much of an impact you have on people. And you feel like the gesture is just small. Like, mm-hmm. I could have just been running down the tunnel, just hit his hand because I seen him up there, and you know. Well, so did you always have an entrepreneurial appetite or was it kind of like um, you kind of feel like you were forced or was it, you know what I'm saying, something that brought it up to where you were like, man, let me jump into this world. I'm going to be honest with you. When I started, you know, when I went to school, it was just football. But then I started to develop, to develop as a business owner as I, um, you know, as I – you know, just went through, you know, went through my career. Um, for the most part, you know, it was, like I say, it was developed, you know, with you bringing on, talking about the YouTube and, you know, us starting the YouTube. And he was like, hey, you wear all these people clothes, bro. Why why you don't just I have your it. own I brand? I remember saying that. I remember mm-hmm. you stopping me like, I don't know, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know. And I remember starting off with my iPhone. Just mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, let me just record you then. And then Good. I started showing you the video. I was like, I remember you sent me that video of Cam Newton. Yeah, yeah, His yeah. son, he was like. Yeah. Ah, bro, fuck it. Come on, let's go. Yeah, we out. Bro. And then I remember after that we kind of got the YouTube going. And then mm-hmm. after that, I brought up the clothing line, and and um, you showed me what you had, bro. And I was like, nah, this ain't. It. <laughs> I this just, ain't I it. just, it was just rough. It was rough. But for the most part, man, I always had like an entrepreneur, like you know, vibe about myself. Like I knew I wanted to be my own boss. Yeah, I always right. knew I wanted to be my own boss. I didn't want to work for nobody when I got to a certain point. And it even with the league, you know, right now I'm like hesitant to go back because I feel like, man, I'm gonna go be, you know, I'm I'm gonna have to be on somebody else's time. I'm gonna have to show up to work when somebody else want me to show up to work. You know what I'm saying? Instead of you know running on my time doing things that I want to do to help myself instead of helping somebody else. And I feel like um, you remember that video with Dame Dash when he was kind of uh, talking to DJ Envy. He was like, mm-hmm. "You call somebody else a boss." Yeah, I feel like that's kind of like the same type of um, mentality you got because mm-hmm. it's like right now we doing our this our podcast right? right? Nobody can tell us, "Hey, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that." You got your also you talk about uh, the lounge that you opened mm-hmm. up, right? So mm-hmm. that's another uh, a revenue of uh, a, you know a business that you didn't open up as well. You can kind of right. talk about that too as well. Um, I mean that that really came out of just. Not nowhere, but, you know, my partners wanted to, you know, invest in, you know, a restaurant or a lounge. And I was like, okay, how do we do this? And, um, you know, I didn't know nothing about the restaurant game. I mean, the restaurant game is tough. It's tough because, you know, the hospitality game, it's it's up and down. You know, one day you hot, the next day you're not. So 
Uh, for me, you know, for the most part, it was like, okay, I want to, I want something to to fall back on. You know, yeah. football is not forever. You know, I'm I'm at the end towards the end of my career. Like, what will I have to fall back on? And one of my partners was like, hey, let's go and I have this vision on a, a restaurant. I feel like it can be, you know. All the above. We can have cigars. We can have, you know, uh, food. Not in all the same rest in place, but we can have it all, the best of both worlds. So, for me, I was like, okay, let's take advantage of it because, you know, this is something I can fall back on. It's something, you know, it's going to be here for, you know, a long time. So, for me, the for me, the most, the biggest thing for me was just having something I can, you know, a legacy to leave. Yeah, because it's kind of like you think about it, We see it all the time. Football players. They make all that money, right? Mm-hmm. Athletes in general, rappers, whoever, they make a bunch of money. Yeah. Then they get to a point in their career mm-hmm. where they have nothing. and They ain't got nothing to fall back on. They mm-hmm. don't have no skills. They don't go back to college, get a degree or anything mm-hmm. like that. So it's like, what do you do now? Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, for me, the biggest thing was just, you know, having something. You know, you, a lot of guys get out the league and have nothing. So they're thinking, that, you know, and, and they go into this depression of, um, you know, really – trying to figure their self out, you know, and I didn't want that to be me. So I always want, I wanted to have something that I, I could just go into that was mine. I didn't have to go and start working for somebody. I didn't have to go into broadcasting like every NFL yeah, player does. Yeah. Like I want to go into something and it be in its mind and, and I'm running it. So I think that was the big, biggest aspect of, you know, opening up the lounge in the restaurant. So opening up a lounge is not cheap, right? Mm-hmm. So what was it like? Uh, getting that first check, bro. Like, did you when you got your first check? Were you thinking, mm, let me become an entrepreneur, or right. let me go buy this whip, or let me go buy this jewelry? Man, I'm gonna be real with you, bro. Like, I, when I got drafted or whatever, or left college. The biggest reason why I left college was to help my mom. You know, she was shout she out, wasn't Duke. shout out shout out mom dudes. Um, but she wasn't in the best of places, and I just seen where she was living at. And you know, you know where we we went to school. We always Facts. walked in bra- on Broadway and, and this and that. So you kind of seen like how people were living, and you kind of seen like, man, if these, you know, I seen like if these kids were raised in this hood, bro, it's not gonna be good for them. So the, for the, the biggest thing for me was getting my family out the hood, getting my family in in a house that they can call home. They'll never have to worry about somebody trying to evict them or anything like that. Like I wanted them to be set up, you know. For, for a lifetime. So the biggest thing for me was buying buy my mom a, a crib. I bought my mom and my brother and sisters a crib. They've been there for 12, you know, 12, 11 years now. And my brother and sister still stay there. But I think it's that's dope, you know, yeah. to have that. You can always, you can stack your bread up and you can stay with mom. You know, maybe give a little change here and there. But you ain't got to feel like you got to r- get rushed out the house or anything like that. I thought that was just beneficial for me and my family. You rem- do you do you remember how much uh, your first check was? Um uh, my first check um I remember getting my signing bonus and stuff and stuff cuz I was, you know, I was first round pick, so um it was a little different for me, you know. We were all on rookie minimum salary. So throughout this season, you made everybody all the rookies made the same amount, which I think was like 500 some thousand you know 545,000 something like that but me being a first rounder and being the first year of the uh new CBA which sucked um you know I got a signing bonus I think my signing bonus was maybe four or five million did you get that like when you as soon as you sign you check a few hours how, how did how did it work? oh well you a know lot of people well, like, it hit direct deposit man a check today. like that you know you know for me I didn't want no check check so I was like hey yeah, set up my direct yeah, deposit. Send my shit to my bank. And man, literally, like you, you sleep one day, and then you the next up. day you're a millionaire. Literally, like you, you know when it's gonna hit, but they, they prolong like when your money's supposed to hit. So you wait and wait and wait, and then one day you just like, oh dang, you know it hit. So what, what, what you felt like you, uh, um, you refresh your shit and you. Mm. Five M's in the bank. Right, and I, I, I don't know. I don't think I was like. I think I was just like, dang, you know, like. It's real, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like I'm like I didn't did it. I made it, you know? Yeah. Um, I think it was a, just a gratifying experience just to like sit there and look at my phone and like, okay, I did this, you know, I did this, you know. Did you have any like vets that was like, Hey bro, like that kinda uh brought you under their wing to try mm-hmm. and help you with like, look, bro, don't I know you got your little bread, but don't mm-hmm. don't don't do this, man. Don't right. you know what I'm saying? Just 
You know what, man? I had some really decent vets, bro. Now I want to say decent. I had some great vets, bro, man. Yeah. Chris Long, shout out Chris Long, my uh, OG Kendall Langford, man. You know, Rob Quinn. Like, a lot of those guys, they came into the league as first-round picks, too. So yeah. they knew what the pressures was, you know, what it was like being a first-rounder, you know, being on the team and having to perform because you are the first-rounder. So a lot of those guys helped me out just, you know, relieving the pressure off and myself. And they were some dogs, too. Oh, yeah, they were some dogs, too. And, and they was the, the funniest group, bro. That's, like, that's my greatest memories as being a professional was hanging out with that group because they they really opened my eyes to a lot of things. And then at the same time, they was just so dope. Cause they didn't treat, they didn't haze me. I didn't get a lot of hazing. Like I got one little joke where they put, um, they put up, they packed my Range Rover full of like packing peanuts. Oh yeah. yeah. They they so they they got my keys out my locker. They took my Range Rover. They drove it. Uh, they drove it to uh, to. It, we were really close to a FedEx. So they bought like a bunch of them big ass bags full of packing peanuts. Opened my sunroof and dumped all them shits in there. So, like, after when practice. Be, bro, when I see it, <laughs> bro, when you see people get pranked like that, where y'all be at when it happens? Bruh, like, you either be inside in meetings. Like, you know, when you're old, older guy, like, you could just dip off. This yeah. ain't this oh, okay. ain't school no more. Boy, like, out of the- man, hey, yeah, coach, I got to go to the restaurant, bro. And then they dip off. <laughs> and then they, they got your keys. They got everything. So, when you come back, I'm a rookie. Yeah. So, I got to be in meetings the whole time, front and center. So they come back, they chilling, boom, boom. You know, after practice, I'm tired. I you open are. my door. Shh. I'm like, bro, what the bro, fuck? Bro, you, you ain't seen it through the window. You weren't paying attention. I, my, t- my tent yeah. was so black, bro. I couldn't. I wasn't yeah. even paying attention. As soon as you get out of practice, you like, bro. I'm trying to go home. Man, I opened up that shit. That shit, all that stuff fell out, bro. I it was, was like, they oh. was right there laughing and shit, like. They was laughing like a motherfucker, crying, laughing, dog, crying, laughing. I'm like, dog, what the fuck? But they, it could have been worse. Yeah, facts. It could have been worse. Seen, I didn't see people get their uh, vehicles saran wrapped. Mm. Uh, that I ain't the worst it. I didn't seen though. If I got time, bro, like the worst thing, the worst thing that I've seen, bro, is uh, Chris, Chris, and uh, who else was it? It was Chris. Yeah, I think it was Corden, Cortland Finnegan. Bro, they threw uh, grasshoppers in James Lord Knight's car. So like at that same FedEx. Somebody didn't pick up like some grasshoppers or whatever, and they they put it in his new ass truck, new Audi. Like I forgot it was an Audi truck, like a Q7. Yeah. Threw them shits in there, Saran wrapped that shit and drove it on the field. And then like when they got caught, you can see on the because uh, he was he he ran around the building trying to find who out who it was. So security had it on the uh, <laughs> camera. So they did all this shit right. <laughs> And then as they walking off the field, all of them looked up and seen the camera was looking at them. They just looked at that bitch and was like, man, fuck it. <laughs> it's, too <laughs> like, it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's already done. So they it was it was funny as hell because he was showing us a video like the moment when they knew they was fucked and they got yeah. caught. Like all of them looked at the camera like, ah. <laughs> the just by their body language, lie. bro. It was like, ah. They just walked off, bro. And then, for, you know, for the whole day, nobody knew what it, who it was. And, you know, James went all the way to the top and got the video and shit. That shit was hilarious, dog. He had to get a new car. That shit was honestly the funniest shit that I ever seen in my life, dog. He was hot. So, look, taking everything back, like, to the mm-hmm. beginning of Brock Brand, yeah. like, what a lot of people don't even understand is, like, we started during COVID, bro. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we had a lot of time on our hands, and I think that's when the – I was just, when COVID started, I was just coming out of that, like, I, you know, I'm going to start saying yes to everything. I'm going to start saying yes to opportunities. I'm going to start saying yes to to a lot of things that's coming towards me, and I'm, I'm going to stop feeling like, you know, I'm not enough. I'm going to stop feeling, you know, so we started, that's when we started to we brand. We started doing, like, the uh, YouTube stuff, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then... Throughout the, our YouTube, we uh, kind of got into more of you started telling me about the clothes and stuff like that. Right. But we were more focused on trying to get our YouTube going. And um, I remember, you know, we were going on trips and stuff like yeah. that. And we would talk to Big uh, private yeah, flights. <laughs> private PJs. <laughs> taking know, PJs. Yeah, but, no, we had but, to do it. Yeah, and that was during COVID. And uh, mm-hmm. not a lot of people was moving, even though, right. I, and, and I feel like COVID. Uh, started a lot of entrepreneurs, bro. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, when everybody started to get fired and, and laid off and can't go to work, they had to start figuring out other things to do. But I think that's what, you know, started to that creative mindset where it's like, okay, let us let me do a YouTube and start to branch out because a lot of people weren't doing nothing but watching TV or watching, watching YouTube, YouTube and stuff like yeah. that. So 
I think that was the biggest reason why I was like, man, let's take advantage of this time to start a YouTube. Man, we did it. We did it like we, four. We, did, we yeah, we did a, a decent amount of videos. Mm-hmm. And my thing was, um, it was just like we didn't really know right. that whole space, and I kind of was just. I, I'm self-taught, you know, right. so I used to be at home editing the videos, watching a YouTube video, mm-hmm. then pause and, and, and edit the video and stuff like that. And so that kind of helped me uh, with a lot of stuff that we had going on. And and that's how I kind of got into the business. I, lo- I learned a lot of stuff about business uh, on YouTube. Right, right, right. So my, with my side on the uh, with the branding and, and learning how to find merch and, mm-hmm. and suppliers and stuff like that. And I started coming back. Let's to talk you. about that. Let's talk about how how has COVID you know affected you? Because you pretty much let's let's talk about it. You really ran Brock Brand Clothing, and you talked to Ali Baba. He's up at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Um. So during that, bro, I remember I really didn't know where to start. Yeah. I was just like, I have a lady that does shirts, mm-hmm. but. I started watching, uh, shout out Justin P. That guy Mm. has taught me a lot just from watching his videos. And um, he would give me, you know, I was watching his videos on how to find suppliers on Alibaba. Right. Because you hear a lot of negative stuff about that website. Yeah. About what about the app. And people, you know, you have to really look and search and find. And uh, like you said, we 13-hour difference. Right. So I would be up late at night trying to talk to these people who really, Mm. their English isn't really that good. So, um, I, Alibaba for everybody for every for context is a wholesale clothing company in overseas. China, yes, overseas. in China. So, uh, you know, him being up at nighttime and them being up in the morning, I think that's how kind of yes. how it works. So, I would be up, it would be like two or three o'clock a.m. our time, mm-hmm. and then it would be around you know three four p.m. for them. Ah, uh, okay, so okay. I kind of had a good you know what I'm saying? Understanding of what, how, and then when you go on the app, it tells you what time it is over there, so you know. Okay, gotcha. Um, so yeah, d- like doing the research on that, and, and just finding good suppliers that were actually verified, because right. it's a lot of people that just post anything on there, and mm-hmm. right, it's like, hey, what you gonna do? They take your, they took your money already. You can't right. find them. You don't know where they at. You don't know where you now. You calling your bank, telling you know what I'm saying it was a lot, and I didn't want to have to go through that because at the end of the day, it was like. I tell you all the time, I don't know, bro. Even mm-hmm. though it's it's not my money that I'm putting up front, I still treat it like as if would I right. want to put my money into this and, yeah. and, and let me see if I can find a better cost, right? Because right. as a business, you still want to uh, – you don't want to have to spend so much money and then have to sell it for so much – you know what I'm saying? Even right. more, right? right you right, want right, right, right. to buy low and sell high, right? Yeah. So um, – and get as much as as profit as you can. So, uh, you know, watching a lot of his videos, it taught me a lot of uh, uh, stuff that just, you know, just doing your research. Because right. anybody can just go in there, oh, this is, all right, boom, order this. Mm-hmm. You never get it, right? Yeah. And so, um, you know, it was a lot, bro. It's, it, you know, it's been a year in the making. Um, yeah. just and we're like, still learning. It was st- I'm still learning stuff. Still learning. Um, you know, bro, like I said, it's been a year. And, 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 and what taught me... Over this past year mm-hmm. is uh, it's not gonna happen overnight. True, true. Because I think that's we, a big thing. When we finally launched our website, I was like, "Yeah, bro, we are gonna sell, make a mm-hmm. hundred thousand this month right away." Right. It's not. It's it's a slow right. grind, right? right? Until you get to that point to where people see how good of uh, quality stuff that we have. Mm-hmm. When we get to that point, then I'll you know I'll be able to sit back and be like, "Damn, hey, man, right. you know now I see where all the hard work is going, right?" But now, mm-hmm. even though I still feel that way, because you know I see we wearing the clothes, mm-hmm. we got our camera people in our clothes and mm-hmm. stuff like that. So, mm-hmm. um, you know, I feel good about everything that I've done mm-hmm. over the past year and even through COVID, just learning a lot mm-hmm. of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I know we we talked about you know being an entrepreneur entrepreneur and things like that. Like, what do you think are, are some of the pros and cons of being an entrepreneur, if you got any? Um, the pros are uh, being an entrepreneur is like, mm-hmm. I'm my own boss, right? right? You're your own boss. Nobody's telling you what you can and can't do. Like, yeah. If you, you know what I'm saying? If I feel like this is what I want to put out, mm-hmm. and I feel like it's a sole purpose, like, that I care about, something like this, yeah. I'm going to put it out, right? For sure. So, um, the pros, a pro for me is, is that, mm-hmm. 
Another pro is just sitting back and realizing, like, this is something that I built, right? Yeah. From the ground up. Yeah. When you take pride and stuff like that, and then people start to see it, they care more about it versus That's somebody real. just putting anything out. Mm-hmm. And people are like, man, this is garbage, bro. Right. Like, I don't feel like they took pride in this, right? Yeah. And that's something that we re- we all want to do. Mm-hmm. At Brock Brand, you right, mm-hmm. at our lounge and stuff like that, we don't take pride in everything we do. So people right. actually appreciate what we put out. And I then, think I think and I, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I think like you said, it goes into what you know what our whole mindset was on the brand, you know. And I, like I told you, like if I did if I did this, like I didn't want it to be half ass, you know. Yeah, I wanted right. to be, you know, I wanted the quality to be, you know, to you know, up par, and I wanted to be um, something that if you wash it, you know, you're gonna get your money's worth out of it, you know, even. You know, thinking about the lounge, I, I didn't want just a club. I wanted a, a more sophisticated, you know, elevated experience. So, um, thinking about that, I think that's what um, what drives me is just a lot of, you know, the gratification you get out of, you know, having a business and having your own things. But the 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 little, you know, nuances that you have, you know, within the business to say like, okay. What are, what are we building? Are we building, you know, a team aspect or, you know, like how are we building our, out our business? You know, are we marketing, you know, the right way? So um, I'm learning as we go. You know, entrepreneur, uh, being an entrepreneur is is a great gratifying thing. But at the same time, um, it can be very stressful. And like you said earlier, um, it doesn't happen overnight. It, it doesn't. doesn't. I feel like that's a con, right? Mm-hmm. Um, because it doesn't, it's a slow grind. Right. And we all, like, I'm become an entrepreneur. I got a great idea. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get rich overnight. It's right. not, it's, that. there's very few yeah. far in between where people come out with an idea, they become an entrepreneur, and it blows up overnight, right? It has right. to be something kind of like life-changing. Mm-hmm. But we doing clothes, right? Everybody right. does clothes. Everybody do clothes. But what we want to separate ourselves from is quality and, mm-hmm. and, you know, lifestyle, stuff like that. So um, a con is definitely, it doesn't happen overnight. Yeah. How do you feel like yourself as an entrepreneur with your mm-hmm. with the lounge that you have? Are you one of those guys who just want to sit back and, and, and let your, your flowers sprout? Or do you want to be hands-on or... You know, because it's a lot of time and money that, and effort that you didn't put into it. Right. Um, I'm about just, I, I take a more leadership approach. I take, you know, I didn't do this by myself. You know, I have a, a great team of people that um, come up with great ideas for marketing, great ideas. You know, like this wasn't all my idea. Like, I, you know, my, my, my shout out to my boy Pop. He came to me saying that, you know, he had he had ideas of always o- owning a restaurant. And, you know, him being my OG, I was like, hey, let's do it. You know, I, I wanted remember, to. I remember when you came up to me and, and told me about You know, that. I was like, let's do it, man. You know, I need, I want something to fall back on. I feel like your your vision is a vision that we can make happen. Let's do it, you know. But I told him, like, if we did, if we do do this, we not going to have do it. This not going to be. Just no typical, like, you know, black restaurant. Like, this is going to be something I want everybody to come, you know, come to. It's, like I said, it, I wanted a more elevated, more sophisticated approach to, you know, our restaurant and, you know, how, how we, you know, how our vibe was in here. So, because I was so used to a lot of things in L.A. and a lot of clubs and things like that. And I kind of, I like that more grown and sexy approach, you know, when, when it comes to clubs. That that young Jumping up and standing on you tables want, that get you old. You feel like I, I want people to come to my spot and them to feel comfortable and mm-hmm. safe and, mm-hmm. and be able to vibe out. And right? enjoy and, yourself, yeah, man. Enjoy yourself. Like, I mean, like, I, typical, I want people who are married that got jobs that want to come here, smoke a cigar, eat some food, drink a little drink, and go home and get ready for work. You know, like, I don't want nobody trying to be in here all day, you know, being here till 4, 4 a.m. Like, nah, just not that type of environment. Like, you're here, you're, you're coming to it and enjoy the vibes, you want to have a good time. Then after that, you t- it's time to go home. Yeah, bro, and that's a fire idea, to, like, to, to have for, you know, for a spot for people to come and enjoy themselves. Yeah. So, like, with all this being said, bro, me and you mm-hmm. have the clothing brand, mm-hmm. the lounge, like, do you feel like it's important, like, do you have a financial advisor? Do you, mm-hmm. how does that even work? Like, do you feel like that's cool to have a financial advisor mm-hmm. and, you know what I'm saying, somebody help you out with the money aspect of, of everything that we got going on? Um, I mean, I jumped into having a financial advisor, like, straight out, you know, like, I, I, I had a financial advisor straight out some you know my agent and the financial advisor they were kind of like it's like a team 
uh, type deal. And it was crazy because my first agent passed away during my rookie season. So um, I had to go through all that and kind of refine, you know, agent and financial advisor. But, um, you know, I, I like having a financial advisor because it's, it's, there's things in the market I don't know. Um, there's things about money I don't know. So it's always good to have somebody um, you trust, first of all, but that you can go to that will teach you things about money and teach you things about, you know, where to put your money. And, you know, I've I've done all the avenues, you know, life insurance, got life insurance for my kids, myself, um, you know, put your money, you know, I've got businesses, you know. So I try to have it set up to where I have different, income streams, you know, coming from different places. So for me, it's, you know, my money isn't just in one bank, you know, it's here, it's there. Cause you don't, you, you never know what's going to go up, what's going to go down, housing market crashes, you know, something goes up, you know, the, you know, say hospitality, you know, shuts down, housing market goes up. So you always want to have um, different, you know, revenue streams. Questions. Speaking of houses, uh, is that something? I'm, I remember we talked about this like a while ago. Is that mm-hmm. something you want to get back into? Um, yeah, I'm doing it right now. I'm doing like a little small flip, you know, small flips right now. I, I, I have uh, a property that, you know, that's being leased out right now. So I, I've, you know, I'm dabbling in um, real estate right now, but I'm really passionate about it, you know. So I plan we, I, on. We even talked about Airbnb. I remember you and yeah. your wife. She definitely wants to do Airbnb. Airbnb. Um, I'm more like having a complex. You know, I want like a 12 unit, 10 unit, Mm. um, you know, apartment complex, fix it up, you know, and, you know, have about 10, you know, people in there leasing it out or renting it out. So um, I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking about longevity of having real estate, not just, you know, having a house or Airbnb. I'm thinking about residual income every month. Residual income. Yes, sir. All right, Brody, so look, we didn't kind of like, you know, talk, let people, gave people to run down on mm-hmm. where we didn't start it from, you know what I'm saying, like that, when we didn't build the Brock brand up into, mm-hmm. you know, where it is today and the Quad, Houston and stuff like that. Come like, on. what do you see yourself, like, what do you see at this company, this brand, like, in mm-hmm. a few years? Um, Man, I'm excited because I, I see this brand th- thriving, you know, based off of, um, just based off of quality, you know, mm-hmm. what we represent, um, what's our persona? What what we're trying to you know sell people? We're not trying to sell people, you know anything. We're actually putting the thought into you know what you know what kind of tags like what kind of you know little other nuances we're we're gonna have on Brock Brand you know coming out. So I'm definitely excited for Brock Brand. I'm excited for the broadcast. Like I feel like we got a great team now, and you know we got the space, we got our own equipment. Like I feel like that's blowing up. Um, Quad Houston, the Den Cigar Lounge. I feel like that's just go keep going up. We go, we go get our name in the streets. We're slowly, uh, we're slowly picking up that momentum um, throughout the end of the year. And man, I'm I'm just ready for a whole fresh start next year and just a, you know a new start with um, as far as the business, Quad, um, you know, Brock Brand Clothing. I'm excited, man. I'm starting to finally see um, that that gratification out of, you know, my businesses. Cause at first, like I said, it, it's tough, man. When you're going through the, the nuances of every day, like, okay, you got to spend money on this. You got to spend money on that, this and that. So, but when your business starts to make money and you see it coming in, even if it's small amounts, you know, right now it's yes. small <laughs> amounts, but you, when you see it come in, it's like, uh, you know, like it's, you know, I, I'm, I don't mind those baby steps. I don't yeah. mind taking those baby steps. Cause I know, when I look back at it, I'm not going to even remember, you know, the first purchase. Yeah. You know, it's it's yeah. going to be like, okay, this is where I'm at now. And I feel like, to harp on that, uh, it, it, with me, I'm like, oh, only one today? Right. Because yeah. it's like, you know, you put so much work into it. Right. You would think like, ah, I'm going to have 100 sales today. But, mm-hmm. you know, like I said, I'm kind of get used to yeah. uh, having the little baby steps and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, also, bro, uh, how do you feel about like just with the consistency of stuff, like mm-hmm. with the uh, the broadcast and mm-hmm. Brock brand? Um, I think I'm, just what you said. I mean, I, I I got a buddy that you know does his own podcast, and the first thing he said is, "Hey, bro, if you want to really do this thing, you got to be consistent with it, no Shout matter out what." Raw room. Shout, Shout out, out raw, raw room, bro. Uh, my boy, uh, Mr. Bates, out there, he coaching right now for the Seattle Seahawks. But um, yeah, my boy said, "Hey." You know, you got to be consistent. You got to be consistent, bro. If you want to do this thing, you got to c- consistently put putting content out. 
you know, every day, no matter what what it's about, you know, just having people come out there and see your face, see that, see those reels, see those um, videos that you're putting out, man. I'm just, you know, I'm excited just to see what we got. Hey, you know who else told us that? What's that? Your barber, June. Oh, yeah. June come told on, us, too. He was like, on, bro, Chico. y'all just start being more consistent, bro. And then what it was was that we just had to build the right crew, bro. Yeah. And, and, and I feel like we got that now with our mm-hmm. cameramen and, and, you know, we're going to have somebody also doing uh, social media for us, bro. So right. that consistency is going to be there. So yeah. once people start seeing it, I feel like it'll be easier for us to, you know, branch out into the uh, social media space. Yeah. Because it's like a, it's a weird thing, mm-hmm. especially once you hit that algorithm. It's a wrap. Yeah. You once know you start I mean? you to see a know, lot of people yeah. take off. No, nah, for sure. Once you start to learn that algorithm, I don't know. I don't even know the algorithm, but I, I know people that have finessed it and you see like. Why is that up there? But it's people working that system, you know what I'm saying? So uh, I'm I'm excited about the future and what we have, you know, going forward. Yeah, bro. So it's a big part of consistency. And with that, bro, I feel like um, consistency breeds. uh, It might help you out with your financial literacy. Like, Mm -hmm. do you feel like is that a big part of it? Or, you know, speak on that. Um, I always considered myself as a, a, a forward thinker. So I always tried to set myself up for later in life, you know, um, and you, you following that, you know, you want to have trust, you want to have, uh, you know, wheels and things like that. But, um, uh, for me is always making the smart moves, you know, making those smart moves, um, first, you know, think about your future first, you know, don't think about the right now. Don't think about, like you said earlier, you know, buying jewels and, you know, cars. Like I, I didn't start buying all that stuff till like my second, third contract, you know, I want to set myself up for the future first. So, you know, buying houses, having real estate, you know, having things in my name that I can hold on to that I can have equity in. Um, I mean, it was very important, you know, so for me, you know, financial literacy is just about, you know, taking the steps to plan for the future, bro. All right, guys, that's a wrap for today's show. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends. And next episode, we'll be talking about financial literacy. So if you guys have any questions, Mm -hmm. leave a comment Mm -hmm. down below. And don't forget, people, don't get ready, stay ready. Peace.